Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash new music industry. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Most of us begin the new year with the best of intentions. We set goals and resolutions, vow to make positive changes in our lives, and head off to the races. How does that turn out for most people? According to an article on Inc.com titled A Brutal Truth About Keeping New Year's Resolutions That Few People Are Willing to Admit, roughly 80% of people who make resolutions drop them by the second week of February. I don't find that surprising myself, but it is sad to see so many people lose momentum and give up on themselves. And 2019 will be no exception. 80% of people will have dropped their resolution by the second week of February. One of the problems is that we try to do too much too fast. I've noticed that people like to talk about the Japanese concept of Kaizen with regards to this topic of resolutions, which is a term used to describe progressive improvement. Unlike what some experts say, it does not mean slow, continuous improvement. But there's no breakthrough in the idea of continuous improvement, is there? And yet, Kaizen seems to have made a huge difference for some well-known companies. See, here in North America, we've taken the first character in the word Kaizen, to mean change. Then we've taken the second character to mean wisdom. Change plus wisdom equals improvement. We're still missing something here. See, the character Kai doesn't just mean change. It means to stop the old and change it to the new. The character Zen doesn't just mean wisdom. It means to do good, to do what's right. It also refers to justice, something that has value, and the root of our motivation behind benevolent acts. Now we're getting somewhere. Kaizen as a whole means to correct or to improve the terms of a contract or your staff. Sorry, YouTube videos, you've done a horrible job of letting people in on this secret. Next time you need someone to explain to you what a Japanese term means, you should ask someone like me that actually speaks Japanese. See, what makes Kaizen effective, what produces breakthrough, is stopping what's not working and doing more of what is working. And it's to have a sense of justice and value about taking things in a new direction. At first glance, this may not appear to be profound, but let's say you're on a mission to lose 20 pounds. What would happen if you applied Kaizen to this process? What if you stopped eating junk food and other unhealthy foods and just ate healthy organic foods instead? You'd achieve your goal relatively quickly, right? So with that, I'd like to revisit another podcast episode from last year entitled The Fewer the Options, The Better. In this episode, I described how only having a laptop to do my work boosted my productivity and helped me accomplish more in less time. Let's go back and have a listen, and I'll be back to close this episode at the end. I recently moved into my new home. Upon arrival, the internet was supposed to work. It didn't. I called the cable company, but to no avail. They couldn't help me get my internet up and running from their support center either. They said a technician would have to come by the following week to get it connected. But life goes on in spite of your problems. Deadlines don't adapt to your circumstances. When you have work to do, you must find a way to get it done. Where I live, Wi-Fi connections are available everywhere, and I own a couple of laptops, so finding a place to do my work wasn't exactly an issue. But there are some slight inconveniences to working on one of my laptops versus my desktop computer. For one, I don't have as much screen retail space to work with. For another, Many of my most important files are stored on my desktop computer, which has more hard drive space. But sometimes you must make do with what you've got, which is what I did. As I took my laptop with me around town to do work, I had an important realization about the limitations I was forced to work with. I discovered I was able to concentrate better on the tasks in front of me. The problem with computers is that they are a gateway to a near infinite number of possibilities, especially if they are connected to the internet. When working at coffee shops with limited connectivity or working at home where I had no connection, I was better able to focus on what I was working on. While writing, I was fully in writing mode, not distracted by social media, Photoshop, email, an article that's open in my browser window, and a half dozen other things. This caused me to realize that the fewer options you have, the better, especially when you're working on something that matters to you. 
I tend to spread my time between many things such as graphic design, web development, email, songwriting, audio production, video editing, and writing. But one of the highest priority activities in my life is writing. Writing is how I've built a popular music industry blog. It's how I've earned two thirds of my living for many years. It's how I've built many valuable industry connections. It's how I develop books, courses, and other resources that thousands of people consume and pay money for. So it would make sense for me to allot a larger portion of my time to writing compared to anything else. I derive some of the greatest value in my life from writing. The ability to focus on that discipline without being distracted has resulted in increased productivity, even though the lack of an internet connection at home has proven inconvenient at times. I don't know about you, but I can be easily distracted. It's not a weakness to admit that. Rather, it's something you should know about yourself so you can come up with strategies to cope with it. For me, clearing away the excess clutter has obviously been beneficial. It's important to realize our lives are more cluttered than ever. We have so many ways to communicate and consume information and so much coming at us at all times that we forget we're being inundated with other people's agendas and priorities. We barely pay any attention to what matters most to us. We live in the past and the future instead of in the moment. If you aren't convinced, then let me paint a picture for you. What if you had a special room with only a guitar in it? What if you locked yourself in that room every day for an hour? What if you had no distractions, your mind was clear, and you were motivated to get some work done? Do you think you would get better at guitar? Some people tell me it can be hard to advance as a player, especially if you've been playing the instrument for a long time. I have to disagree. I find 15 minutes of focused practice time is more than enough to make progress as a guitarist, and I've been playing for nearly 16 years. Sometimes I can learn an entire guitar solo in that time. The problem today is people don't focus. We're under the illusion that we're focusing when in reality, we're allowing unnecessary distractions into our lives all the time. TV shows and movies, YouTube videos, emails, texts, instant messages, phone calls, postal mail, and the list goes on. Here's another example. Let's say you're an ele electronic music producer. Maybe you only own one laptop right now, so you use it for everything. Email, word processing, spreadsheets, video games, and so on. What if you had a single laptop de dedicated to the purpose of audio production? This would allow you to get away from other distractions and simply concentrate on the act of creating great music. Please note, I'm not asking you to cut everything out of your life and stay focused on your highest priorities for the entire duration of your waking hours. Some people can do that, but for most, it would be ridiculous. Plus, I've been finding considerable value in having a life outside of my work, especially in the last six months. I think you would too. If you've been going at it hard lately, then please do yourself a favor. Take the day off early. Go to see a movie, get out in nature, or do something that energizes you. You'll thank me for it later. What I am asking you to think about is what would be possible if you dedicated an hour with every bit of attention and concentration you could muster to each of your highest priority tasks every single day. This may surprise you, but I think you would find yourself more productive than 80% of people out there. By the way, I would not advise picking more than two or three things to focus on because that seems to be about what most people can handle at a given time. If you take on too much, you'll wear yourself down and spread yourself too thin. As it has often been said, work will always fill the space you've allotted for it. This doesn't mean you can complete something that takes six hours in one hour, but it does mean one hour of focused effort can produce better results than six hours of half-hearted distracted effort. In closing, here are a few questions to get you thinking. In what areas of your life do you have too many distractions? What would you consider your highest priority tasks? Do you think dedicating an hour of focused effort into each of your most important projects would allow you to achieve more? Where are you wasting the most time and what could you do to reclaim it? And I'm back to wrap up today's episode. As I'm sure you're beginning to see, reducing distraction will make you more productive this year and in the years ahead. Although I hinted at several tactics for improving your productivity in the original recording of episode 77, I like to make these a little more concrete. So here are a few things you can do to reduce distraction. Disconnect. It's a good idea to disconnect from your phone and the internet every once in a while. This is a healthy thing to do. Plus, it leaves space for ideas to coalesce in your mind and inspiration to hit. Sometimes not being connected can help you get more done because it means fewer distractions. Change your environment. 
Try doing your work in a coffee shop, in a library, at a bar or a pub, and so on. Notice what impact the environment has on your psyche. Notice how your surroundings can influence what you're thinking about. Determine whether you get more or less done in that environment. I like to do my work in a coffee house at least once per month, if not weekly. I've found that changing your surroundings can lead to new ideas and even help you achieve more clarity overall. Turn off notifications. I'm not a fan of notifications and I've turned most of them off on my phone. I try to turn off notifications on my laptop and desktop computers too because they annoy me. The only notifications I still leave on are phone calls, texts, or instant messages. But you can even turn these off and check your phone at your own convenience if you prefer. After all, your time is valuable and you can't be at everyone's beck and call 24-7. Reduce your email clutter. Unsubscribe from email newsletters. I know some people put a lot of importance on seeing what other people in their niche are up to. And while this can be of some value, recognize that you are the one being sold to when you're opening other people's emails. So you should be sending more emails than you're reading. Also, I've subscribed to some email lists thinking I would be spying on the competition only to forget what I was doing and end up unsubscribing anyway. Be intentional. If you have multiple computers, maybe one could be for general administrative and marketing work, while your other computer is your dedicated studio computer. If you have a spare room in your house, maybe that room could be your practice room. Determine what purpose everything serves in your environment. If it doesn't serve a purpose, maybe it's time to get rid of it. Don't let everything happen on autopilot final thoughts. With that, I'd like to close this episode. I hope you found this valuable. Here's wishing you a productive 2019. Thank you for listening. Music in this episode was brought to you by Brian Young. Wherever you're listening to this right now, please consider leaving a five-star review and comment to help us get the word out about the podcast. 